the use effect hook is how we handle side effects in functional components in React. And in this video, we're going to show you how to use it. This is the third video in my React hook series, so make sure you check those two out first. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you like and subscribe. Now let's jump in. The use effect hook handles all kinds of side effects in our components, so it can get a little tricky. I'm going to start simple and build on top of each step so you can see all the things you can do with use effect. This is a very useful hook, so take the time to really understand it. If you need more information afterwards, I'll leave a link to the docs in the description below. Hopefully after the video though, you'll be comfortable enough to start using it on your own. So. I've set up a little counter with state just so we have something to see on the screen and so you don't have to watch me set up some boilerplate. So the first thing we're going to do to start using use effect is actually import it. And to use use effect, we just call it inside the body of our functions. And use effect takes a function as its first argument. And this is run every time the component renders. So if I put a console log in here, we will see, let me just refresh this here is actually logged out to the screen straight away. And anytime we re-render, it'll be logged as well. So a lot of the times when you have a component uh, just mounting to the screen, you might want to do something. So if you want this to run just once, then what we would do is pass it its second argument, which is an array. And in the array, we just leave it empty for now and it will only run once. So there you go, refresh it again, and it only runs once. So use effect takes two arguments. It takes a function, and then it takes an array of arguments you want to watch. So if you wanted this to work, uh, run again, anytime a state change or a prop change, you could pass it in here. So say for here, I wanted to change anytime to count or console log every time the count changes. So we'll put the count inside this array. And now you'll see it running again. But if we had another piece of state, I'm just going to copy and paste this just because it's basically going to be the same thing. Two and set count two. And I want to make This as count two for now. Being really lazy with this one. Excellent. Okay. So now we have two counters, but the second counter doesn't cause that re render. So as you can see, but if I added in the count two now, it'll watch for both of those state changes. So for a lot of the times, you'll just probably, like a, a very common use case is you want this to only run when the component actually mounts. So then you could just leave it with an empty array. There is one more thing we can do inside our use effect hook, and that's return a function. And when we return a function, this will get run in this case, any time our component is about to unmount or it's about to come off the, the screen. So I'm going to show you how that works here. So we'll say bye here. And as you can see, I'm going to refresh this. And it's not running the console login here. So let's make this component unmount. 
So back in our app, I'm going to add a little bit of state. And in the state, we're going to say const toggle and set toggle. This is because we're going to show and hide the component equals use state and we'll set it to true for for now and then we'll say if we click anywhere to unmount it so on click and we'll set toggle to false and then we'll say toggle or null okay so let's refresh this and we have this running so far and then when we click we get the buy as it's unmounted so this is very useful if you want to actually clean up afterwards. So we can also get this to run with re-renders. So if we wanted this to change and clean up between every re-render, we could leave out the arguments. And let's refresh this. And I'm actually going to go back and delete this now because we want to stop this from unmounting. Cool save this so now that i've taken the argument off we'll see it actually runs the cleanup before it calls the use effect again so this is very useful so anytime you want to uh you know attach an event listener or something like that that we actually clean up afterwards so it's definitely very useful to remember to put in the empty array and return a cleaner and we're going to see this a little bit later in the video uh, when we have a working sample So React performs the cleanup whenever a component unmounts. However, we learned earlier, the effects run on every render and not just once. So that's why React also runs it with every re-render as well. But as I said, there's, if we pass in arguments here, we can control when it runs that re-render as well. So there will be edge cases that you'll want to maybe avoid it, but we're not going to jump into that now. I'll definitely say jump into the React docs if you want to have a look at that in more detail. So I'm gonna delete all of this for now because we're gonna start building up a sample. And in this sample, we're going to check for the coordinates that we click on the screen. So this is just a little bit more useful because we have to add event listeners to the screen, clean off the event listeners, and then maybe we can also show you in the end actually using more than one use effect in a row because that's a very common use case as well. So first off, there's gonna be two coordinates, an X and a Y. So I'm going to make a const coordinates. and set coordinates and we'll say use state and I'm going to pass this with an object of x of 0 and we'll say y of 0 for now and then let's get the coordinates to show on the screen first so I'm actually going to destructure the coordinates out because I know I'm going to refer to them separately so we'll say const x and y equals coordinates and then in here we will say x y cool so now we, we can see the coordinates on the screen so we haven't done anything yet so next thing we're going to do is add some logic into our use effect. 
So the first thing we're going to do is add an event listener. So we'll say document dot add event listener, and we're going to listen for the click event. And we're going to do something in here then. So in the mouse, I'm going to make a, a function outside of this for the mouse click event. And we'll say const mouse click handler equals, uh, we'll say it takes then event because we know that's going to come back. And then we're going to set the coordinates. X is going to be the event dot client X and Y is going to be event dot client Y. And instead of this empty function, we are going to pass in this handler. Excellent. So, so refresh the page. And now we get some coordinates. Now, when we add event listeners to the screen, it's always good practice to actually make sure we clean up afterwards. So, Right now, this is going to re-render on every state change and an event listener would click with the event listener here. So let's make sure this only runs once by adding an empty array. And then let's make sure if it's going to unmount that we actually remove the event listener. So in here, we're going to pass it another function. And then we'll say document dot remove event listener. And we're going to remove the click. And the mouse click handler. So this is what I mean by we maybe afterwards, if this component is going to unmount, we want to remove the event listener. So now let's get into a little bit more complex deals. How about if we wanted to count how many times we've clicked on the screen? So let's create another one. And we'll say click count and set click count. And that's going to equal use state. And we'll say zero. And then what we're going to do is add another use effect here. And this use effect is going to call the click count or set click count every time the coordinates change. So we're going to pass in coordinates and then we'll say set click count to Click count plus one. Let's refresh this. What's the problem here? Click count is assigned but never used. Okay, let's have a look now. Oh, yes, because we're not reading it on the screen. So now we can say. No, that's not what we wanted. We want click count here. Yeah, our warning's gone away now. So what's happened here is it's run down and it goes through this use effect first as our document listener. And then in parallel, it runs this. So just to show you that these run in order, 
one and console.log two. Refresh the page. Okay. And because this is running straight away, um, we are already adding plus one. So just to make it zero to start, I'm going to say this is minus one just to account for it. Okay, excellent. Now it's telling us how many times we've clicked on the screen. I'm going to remove these console logs as well. So depending on what you want to do or if you want to use an effect, depending on what changes, you will, I suppose, use multiple use effects. So let's summarize this then. So use effect accepts a function and if it returns a function, it will run as a cleanup action. It has an optional second argument, and if we leave it blank, it will run on every single render. If we pass in an empty array, it will run once, and we can pass it a value, and it will execute when that value changes. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Um, leave a comment with what you think of React Hooks so far. I'm hoping the, the lessons so far have been good, and until next time, happy coding.